So three, let's test the two-in-one digital phosphorosciloscope from FNIRSE. With a 5mV per division sensitivity, 180MHz bandwidth and 500 mega samples per second. Let's take a look at more specifications here. It seems to also contain a function generator, a digital phosphor, which means the pixels can have various levels of brightness, simulating a phosphor of a CRT screen oscilloscope, instead of the pixels being just on or off. It has two channels, a luxury for a small portable oscilloscope. 2.5 nanoseconds race time, 120 kilopoints, storage depth, 1 mega ohm, 5 millivolts to 10 volts per division, 5 nanoseconds to 50 seconds per division, the accuracy here, automatic single normal, raising falling, measurement range, frequency period amplitude, roll mode, XY mode, you can set a 20 megahertz bandwidth limit, a high voltage burnout protection, that's useful, the resolution of the display, 3000 mAh battery, 3.5 hours at full charge. But now of course let's open the box. And two probes, so it seems to be really two channels. The manual, which nobody reads, a USB charging cable, an adapter to charge it, and the oscilloscope, and that's it. Here are the connectors for the channels, the USB charging port, Generator ground, the back of it and the front. Let's try to turn it on. And I can see two traces. I will of course do this. And now of course button pressing time. This saves the screenshot. This saves the waveform. Slow movement, fast movement, original setting, you can move the traces up and down, mode, now I'm moving the second channel, you can move it to the left or right, this is the trigger, automatic adjustment here, stop, run, stop, run, Measurement. Here you access the measurement settings, the trigger settings, the channel 2 settings, channel 1 settings. H plus, H minus is changing the time bias. And 5 nanoseconds per division is the fastest. Here you change the voltage per division, 5 millivolts, the highest sensitivity, and 10 volts is the lowest sensitivity. Here is the trigger level that you can move. You can set it to 50%. There's a zoom. So it's basically like a dual time base oscilloscope. It also has a generator in it. A function generator which can generate a square wave, triangular, sawtooth, the other way, stepped waveform, half wave rectified sine wave, full wave rectified sine wave, exponent logarithm, exponent logarithm, square root, multi audio, some other waveforms even custom, you can also change the duty cycle. That's useful. Of course you can set the frequency here in Hertz. It seems to go up to 10 megahertz. So let's try to connect to the probes, or at least one of them, and see the signal from the generator. Two nice probes come with it. 200 megahertz, times one or times 10. Let's connect one to the channel one and connect it to the terminals of the generator, which I guess are here. Generator, ground, and let's see. I've set one kilohertz 50% duty cycle square wave, and we can use it to calibrate the probe to show a nice square wave. That's it. The calibration screwdriver comes with the probes, and we can test the generator a bit more. And you can see the waveforms it produces. Nice. Custom wave. You can of course change the frequency here. 
the trigger level. We're just automatically at 50%. And now let's dive into the menu. Functions, waveform brightness, color temperature, XY mode, auto bandwidth limit, several levels here, baseline calibration, system calibration, this button is the return, system settings, background grid display, transparent menus, you can assess the transparency here, there's a lot of settings. Save current configuration USB sharing mode, automatic shutdown after a certain time, up to two hours, factory settings, disk formatting, cursor measure, horizontal cursor, vertical cursor, parameter measure for channel 1 or channel 2, maximum minimum voltage average RMS peak, peak to peak, frequency period, positive half cycle time, negative half cycle time, and a lot of other settings, data browser, picture browser, this is basically the screenshots I made, you can see them here, waveforms I saved here, capture browser, there is nothing saved here yet, capture output, cut out a part or the whole part of the current waveform signal and save it as the output of the signal generator, this looks interesting, color temperature is like a rainbow or spectrum, for the digital phosphor I guess, here I can turn it off, channel options, enable channel, channel 1, probe attenuation, 1 times, 10 times or 100 times, this is useful for high voltage probes, coupling mode DC or AC, FFT display, this one can do FFT, amazing, hard band with limit, and I guess the same settings will be for the other channel, Trigger options, automatic, single normal, trigger edge rising or falling, trigger channel 1 or 2, high frequency rejection, 3 levels, nice, but of course you can access some settings directly using buttons for the trigger settings, channel 2 settings, channel 1 settings, measurement settings, you don't have to go through the entire menu, let's demonstrate the zoom function on my ring tester, here is the waveform, but here you can't see the damped oscillations, so you have to zoom and you can shift it and zoom it until you can see the individual damped oscillations here. The zoom function really is quite handy. I also connected and calibrated the probe of the other channel, which also seems to work. And this button changes whether you're moving the channel 1 or channel 2, and the same applies to the sensitivity. And the move button actually changes the speed it moves at when using these arrows. Slow movement, now it's moving slowly. The trigger level also is moving slowly. You can fine adjust it. And fast movement, and you're moving it fast. The horizontal and vertical cursor. And some more measurements, which are then here. Now let's try the capture output function. You can actually choose using the cursors what you capture and then you capture it and it's stored. And then you go into the data browser, capture browser and here is the waveform set. And in the function generator you can actually replay it or recreate it. This is square sine wave custom. And now the probe of the second channel is connected to the function generator. And now the function generator is actually replaying or recreating the captured waveform. And it doesn't have to even replay it at the same frequency, it can actually replay it at the different frequencies, faster, slower. Replaying the captured waveform at various speeds, amazing! And for each channel you can activate the FFT, the Fourier transformation. And you can see it here in red. I've connected the channel 1 to the function generator in it and you can see it shows various Fourier transformations for various waveforms. Some of them have some harmonics. A sine wave will have no harmonics. Here it is, no harmonics in it. Other waveforms of course have a lot of harmonics.
and each channel can have its own FFT. The second channel is in a blue here. Not bad. Now let's try to charge it using the included USB-C cable and the power button turns red and it's charging and it turns green when it's fully charged. Some sort of a race time test, but I probably need less creepy source of a test signal. I'm just zooming on a square wave here. And the XY mode and some Lissajou curves. One channel connected to the sine wave from the internal function generator and the other channel connected to an external function generator, again producing a sine wave. But now, of course, let's take a look in it. There are four screws in it, so let's remove them. It's opening. And that's it. Here's the big battery on the back of it. 3000 mAh. And here all the circuitry. The two inputs go into these two shielded modules. The USB port. And there's a lot of its transistors, capacitors, two chips here, probably one for each channel, a big microcontroller here, another big chip here, small chip, maybe some charging controller is going to be somewhere here, some small inductors, here's probably the red and green LED indicating the state of charging, the 8 pin chip has no marking, there is a 25 MHz crystal, some configurable clock generator chip with three outputs, this is probably some processor, as well as this one, the big one. These two chips have no marking on them or remove the marking. A 24 MHz crystal, IP2312, a synchronous back regulator lithium ion charger, and here's some flash memory. Now let's see the other side of the board. I removed three screws and not much here. Basically just pads for the buttons. And here is the display. And that's it. I fully charged it. And it measured 3242 mAh, which is better than what the battery says. And the energy in watt hours. 11.82 watt hours, which is again better than 11.1 it says. I've charged it again and let's put it back together. So that's it, a very interesting oscilloscope, and definitely the best handheld oscilloscope I have so far. So big thanks Fnirsi and there will be some link in the description. And of course if you like my videos please consider supporting my channel on Patreon, using the thanks button and subscribing. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.